Christian for 13 years. I had an amazing encounter with Jesus uh, 13 years ago. You know, I was a drug dealer and my life was empty. I had all the nice cars and money and, uh, you know, stuff of the drug trade gives you. But uh, I was empty, lonely, and when I had an, an encounter with Jesus, He spoke to me. I knew I was a sinner. I fell to my knees. I repented. I felt His presence. It was such an amazing love, so tangible, that, uh, you know, I could just feel this guilt and shame, and I just wanted Him. I just wanted Jesus. I, wanted, I just wanted God. How it, how it has changed my life is just incredible. Um, I don't have nightmares anymore like how I used to before I was saved. I'm fulfilled, I have joy, and God has blessed me with an amazing wife and a ministry down in Peru. And I and I'm I would call it call it an amazing adventurous journey. Because there's always stuff happening with God. So many open doors. And uh, we have a ministry in Peru, so we're very active down there uh, with the youth. And um, I don't know, I just feel so fulfilled when, when I give, share the gospel to people. And when I lead them, lead them to Christ. It's just such a, a rewarding fulfillment that I can't explain. I've been a Christian uh, for 28 years. And... Um, the difference my life is now uh, compared to then is night and day. Uh, before I didn't have a whole lot of meaning in my life, but now I do. And I feel there's more fulfillment. I feel there's more joy. Um, it's like I'm being instructed by the Lord with discernment and wisdom on how to do things and uh, do things that I need to do in my life. Uh, I'll give an example when I was in driving through Hope the other day, uh, Hope, British Columbia. Um, as I made my way through Hope, I parked there and I had a few coffee. I had a coffee and I had something to eat. And I had a few thoughts running through my head. Wouldn't it be nice to live here again? Because I used to live in Hope back in 1988 or 89. And, uh, or was it, yeah, 1990 anyway. Uh, the date doesn't really matter. Um, and I really enjoyed it because it, I felt like I was kind of secluding myself from the rest of the world and it was very nice. I'm a bit of a small city guy anyway. And and I thought, Lord, wouldn't it be nice to be able to plant some roots here? I've got a good job. I've got you know some good things going for me. I don't have any responsibilities anymore because my kids are all moved out. Wouldn't it be nice just to plant myself here? And I kind of felt like he was saying, no, you don't. I don't want you planting yourself uh, anywhere. You're, I, it's almost like he didn't, I almost felt disappointed in a way. It's like, why? Like, you know what? You get that sense, you get that feeling that you want to be, you want to establish some roots and you want to establish a church and you want to, you know, make some area your little, your, your home. And I feel like my home right now is on the road, which is really bizarre because I, well, that's where his, that's where my ministry is. It's out there on the road. So since I've been, before I was a Christian, I was a Catholic. And uh, for those of you out there that are familiar with Catholicism, it's, you know, it's a very romantic religion. Uh, they have, um, you go to church and it's very holy, um, but something was still missing. Something was missing in me. And that was that personal relationship that I wake up every single morning and I depend on that. I get up when I'm in my truck and uh, I read my Bible and um, I thank God for that presence he has in my life. And right now I have a personal relationship as opposed to before where I constantly felt like I was still seeking something and I couldn't find it. My heart's desire is to seek the living God. Uh, you know, I have a thirst every day, even when I'm working, to seek Him, to know His will, just to be guided by Him, whatever it is that He wants me to do. Uh, and of course with my wife, you know, what He wants us to do. Um, uh, I really feel a desire to be a minister of the Gospel. Get the Gospel out there to people 
who need to be saved, who need to hear the, the saving power of Jesus Christ. Um, because, you know, time is short, and that's the only purpose why we are here. You know, uh, God, God could have, you know, saved us and then took us right up to heaven. But no, we got saved, we were born again, and now we're on a mission. Because there's so many people that are perishing every day. And, you know, I believe that every born again believer has a thirst. Has a thirst and a hunger to seek the living God. The desire that God has given me, the desire that's in my heart, is uh, He's given me a compassion for people. Um, I've noticed in the last three years that He's given me a tremendous compassion. Um, I drive the highways, I'm a truck driver, and I spend a lot of time interacting with different clients at stores, especially Walmart. And it's really strange how God will use certain situations to touch your heart and to open your eyes. I deal with a lot of people at Walmart because I do deliveries there. And I talk to a lot of the people working on the docks and they don't get paid very much money at all and they work so hard. And I interact also with the other people that work in the, in the warehouse in the back and I talk with them. One of these days, God will give me boldness and I'll, you know, maybe share the gospel with them, but he hasn't given me that boldness yet. I think he's still training me. Um, but I end up talking with these people and they tell me their stories and they tell me how they wish they had a better job. And then I think, God, you've blessed me with such an incredible job. I'm getting paid well. I'm able to save money and look at these people. They're still managing to smile, even though they're getting paid peanuts. So. I used to look, I wouldn't say I looked down on people like that, but I never really paid much attention to their needs. And now when I see a person on the street, or I see someone working like at a drive through like when you go through a drive through I always give someone an extra smile. I used to give people hard times, all, a uh, hard time all the time uh, in restaurants if I didn't get my meal the way I wanted, or my fries were cold, or my coffee was cold. I don't act that way anymore. Actually, I tip them now and I smile at them and I say, I hope you're having a good day because it's, it's like God is showing me how blessed I am. And it's like he's opening my eyes, teaching me. And I think he's teaching me how to be more um, loving and compassionate towards people. And I think that's really going to play a role in uh, you know the future he's got for me. And I know that has to do with evangelism. I feel in my heart, my heart's desire is to preach the gospel boldly with with compassion but also to preach it with authority um, I feel like God has given me a fire in my heart to preach repentance in a loving way and I know I'm still being taught that by him right now but my heart's desire is to reach as many people as I can with the gospel and uh, and I believe the Lord is really doing that right now as he trains me being out on the highway and spending that alone time with him. And uh, one of the other things I'll mention too is that when I'm at truck stops, I like to take walks after a long trip. And I'll take a walk through the truck stop and I notice a lot of the truck drivers are sitting in their cabs and they're quietly sitting there and a lot of them aren't doing anything. Some of them are on their iPads, some of them are on their phones, and a lot of them are just sitting there. They're either waiting for a load or they're just lonely. And some of them have animals and some of them don't. And a part of me just wants to walk up and just reach out to these people. But it's almost like the Lord saying, not yet. Not yet. I still got some work left to do in you. And uh, he has a lot of work left to do with me. Um, but um, I'm quite pleased with the results he's, you know, that, you know, what he's doing in me so far. So um, I'm looking forward to, um, I'm looking forward to the bigger plan he's got for me. I certainly feel an urgency in my spirit to lay everything down to go out and preach the gospel. Um, yeah, I have a sense that we are definitely in the last days. I, I, I strongly believe that this is the last generation. Um, you know, we don't know the, uh, the uh, time or day of the coming of our Lord Jesus, but he does tell us, you know, the uh, seasons. Like, look up, then your redemption draws nigh. Uh, but I definitely do feel an urgency to just preach the gospel. To go out and try to sow as many seeds as I can possible. 
and hopefully reach as many people as possible. Um, you know, like I'm very blessed with my job, I'm very thankful, but I feel something in my spirit that it's not enough, that there's got to be more, that there's, that like God is tugging on my spirit to go out in the parks, go out in the streets and preach the gospel. And so that's what I did in the last couple of months. I uh, made up, a, a, you know, like little sheets of my testimony and, uh, you know, the Reader's Digest version of it. And I just started handing them out in the uh, skateboard parks and teenagers, uh, young, you know, just whoever, even in the res restaurants, uh, you know, where, wherever I am, even when I'm driving my garbage truck at work depending on who I see or who I talk to, I just hand them out. <clears throat> so, I believe that that the time is now, and I believe that many born-again Christians are probably feeling that same tug in their spirit as well, because the Holy Spirit is drawing us to get out and share the gospel, because time is short. I definitely sense an urgency in the world right now um, with what we're seeing with ISIS. Um, we're watching the EU fall apart. Um, the way the uh, economy is going down, Britain just left the EU and all of a sudden markets everywhere are starting to fall and starting to crash. Uh, it's not only that too, it's just the morality of, of, of the people that we talk to and the people like if you, I, I mean the last time I actually watched regular television, I can't remember when that was, but. Once in a while when I'm in a driver's lounge, I'll notice a lot of the drivers, they're watching this garbage on TV and the jokes are filthy. The jokes are blasphemous and everyone in the driver's lounge is laughing and I'm like, how can they laugh at this crap? I mean, it was just, it bothers me. And I'm like, wow, look at the society we're living in. And stuff like this would never have been allowed on TV even 20 years ago. and. It's just getting worse and worse, and I do feel in my spirit. And like I mentioned before, when um, you know, I could easily find a cute little town, cushy little town, and settle my roots, get myself a little bungalow, a little camper, and just kind of hide away, do my job on the weekends or, or during the week rather, and get come home on weekends and zzz, go fishing. Right? What a nice life that would be. But I don't feel that's my calling. I feel a tremendous urgency, and the urgency that I feel is that God has me here to reach people with the, with the gospel. And um, we need to tell as many people as possible that our Savior is coming back. Right now, He is a loving, graceful, forgiving Savior. But when He comes back, He's gonna come back with eyes of fire. He's coming back as a judge, and there will be no uh, you know, there will be no second chance when he comes back and people are going to run. They're going to ask for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. It's going to be a scary time. And if we really, truly love Jesus, we need to love others the way he loves them. He loves even the worst possible person out there, the worst criminal, the pedophile, uh, the blasphemous. He loves everyone unconditionally. He wants all to come to repentance. and. Uh, we need to have that same urgency in our heart as he does. Uh, Second Peter mentions, I can't remember what, where it is in there specifically, but Second Peter, I read it the other day, mentions where um, some people in some cases were in that reading where um, that were in some cases we can be impatient that why isn't he coming back now? Why isn't he doing anything about this now? Because he's long suffering. He's patient because he doesn't want one person to perish. And if he has that attitude, we need to have that attitude. Do I feel an urgency right now? Absolutely. The more time we sit around and play online gaming, or the more time we sit around watching, you know, stuff on the idiot box, people say, oh, the TV's not a god. Really, then why is all the furniture facing it in the house? Think about that. You go into anyone's house, all the furniture is lined up around the television set and they try to tell us it's not a god. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm not yeah, I'm not trying to condemn people that have that because I've been in that situation before, and especially now the TVs are getting bigger and bigger and bigger now. They're getting bigger than our than our god, isn't it? Aren't they? The TVs. So, yeah, absolutely there's an urgency and uh, I feel as Christians, 
we need to step up to the plate and we need we not we don't just need to guess what we need to do we need to pray we need to fast if we don't know what we're supposed to do we need to ask God and we got to wait for him to to tell us what what what, uh, what he wants us to do but I personally feel that that's my role and yeah I need to that's what I want to do that's my heart's desire that's my goal that's the urgency that I have in my heart reach as many people as I can with uh, the tools God has given me, the talents God's given me. My message for the believer and the non-believer would be this. First, the believer would be, get our focus, our eyes on Jesus. Let's get in the Word of God, move any worldly distractions out of our life. We are definitely in the last generation before our Lord is coming back. It's, it's full of perversion, hate, murder, envy, strife, earthquakes, everything that the Bible is, has been talking about. We are definitely in the last generation. And let's just get our focus off of our own ambitions and our own will and our own desires. Let's line up what God wants. And whatever that is, we need to do it because time is short. And my message for the non-believer would be this. Open your heart just a little. God is not looking for perfection or for good works. He's looking for an open heart. Those who truly want to seek Him and want to change their life over. And Jesus is such a loving God that He never forces His love upon anyone. It's all about free will. And so as long as you have the breath of life in you, he will give you a choice to make. You can either receive him or you can reject him. But the moment that God decides to take your last breath, you won't have that choice anymore. The Bible says that we're all going to stand naked in front of him. Rich, poor, famous, non-famous. We're going to be spiritually stripped, standing right in front of him. And he's going to open up the book of life. And those names who are not written in that book will be cast away. And I don't want to talk about that place because it, it is a place, a real reality nightmare. Nobody wants to go there because the Bible says that it was actually created for Satan and his demons. It wasn't even created for humans. But people choose. They choose to go there not knowing about that future. But you still have time. Jesus is, is here. His presence is in this world right now. And it's a matter of time before His Holy Spirit is lifted up. And those who love Him will not be on this earth much longer. And then spiritual darkness is going to come. And crazy things are going to happen. So the Bible says that all who confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that He was sent from the Father, from heaven, that He died on the cross for our sins, and He rose the third day to give everyone everlasting life. If you believe that in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, you will be saved. So please, open your heart just a little. Time is short. My message for the believers and non-believers would be uh, for the believers. If you are a true Christian, you're going to feel um, an urgency in your heart because the Holy Spirit is going to put that in your heart. Um, if you're working, say, a nine to five job and you go to church on Sunday and you come home and you spend a few hours in front of the television set instead of opening your Bible, do you not feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heart? Hey, I want you to read that. And you might say, you know what, I'll do it in the morning. And then the morning comes around, you're getting up late and you don't really get around to it. And you, oh, I'll put it off. You know, I don't quite see everything in Revelation being fulfilled yet. I don't see all the prophecies. There's lots of time. Let me make one thing very, very clear. Uh, the Lord could come whenever he chooses to come. He could call us whenever he chooses to call us. And I'm not just talking about Bible prophecy. We could get hit by a car tomorrow. We could have a heart attack tomorrow. Our day could be done tonight. 
Um, our last breath could be tonight while we rest. And then we'll stand before him. And we'll hope that he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. But can you actually really think right now in your heart, what do you think that Jesus would say to you if you died right now? Would he say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or would he look at you with a little disappointment that you could have did a little bit more? And when I think about that, I think to myself now, oh Lord, please give me another day. Give me a little bit more time to make right that I haven't done yet. I want to do so much more. I feel that calling in my heart that you want me to reach that neighbor or that family member, or you just want me to live a life of reverence, of looking at you with reverence and looking at you with awe, treating you like a king because you are the king. You, you died on a cross and shed your blood for me. And what am I giving you in return? I'm watching four hours of sitcom television when I get home. But if we died tonight, and he said to us, and I dread the thought of even saying this, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. And then from that time on, we are cast into the lake of fire, a place that was made for the devil and his angels, scripture says, it wasn't even made for us. It was made for the devil and his angels. But people will go there because they've chosen to go there. God will not ever force us to love him. He tells us the benefits in his word on what benefits are, or rather, the benefits that are in the word are endless when we love him. He's a loving father who wants to spoil us. He's a loving father who wants to spend eternity with us. And when we reject him, and when we say no, and, and we conform to the ways of this world, and we live carnal lifestyles, and we expect Jesus to say, well done, good and faithful servant, we're fooling ourselves. As I mentioned before, he is a just, loving, sacrificing. His love is so sacrificial towards us. Um, but, but when the time comes, when the end, when, when our end comes, he's going to look at us, and we're going to. It's either going to be well done, good, faithful servant, or I never knew you. And the lake of fire is a permanent thing. The lake of fire is not going to be destroyed at the end of ten thousand years. It's a permanent thing. And the thought of a permanent life of living in darkness and torment and loneliness and a life without God. Right now, an atheist or a non-believer might say, well, I don't have God in my life right now and I'm doing great. Yes, but you seem, you've got to remember something. God's presence is in this world right now. And that's one of the reasons why it hasn't blown up in a mushroom cloud yet. God's presence is all around us. The reason why you're feeling comfortable because he is in this world right now. He's around us and he is protecting you. He's waiting for you to come to repentance. So my me message for the believers is please examine your life. Examine what's going on with you and your family and repent and come to the Lord and turn away and shut off the idiot box for a while and get into your Bible because the Bible is a beautiful thing. So uh, I say this because I, I love you all and I want you to um, share the benefits of an eternal life with a Savior that loves us so much. And as for the non-believer, there's only one real thing that I have in my heart. If you're watching this video, God has led you here and he's trying to get your attention and he loves you and he's given you an opportunity to come to him and he's given you an opportunity for repentance. And if you have heard anyone else say anything to you about God or try to hand you a track or maybe you've turned the radio on to a television program or a radio program and, um, and you've heard somebody, oh, there's that religious stuff again. Maybe God's been trying to reach you for a long time and you've been ignoring it. Maybe what you're hearing right now is his last ditch effort to get, a, to get your attention. If you don't know if you had a bad experiences with with religion in the past don't blame god for that that's not his fault god hates religion he does not like religion the bible he just can't stand religion um he what we have is not a religion what we have is a relationship and it's a personal relationship with him and he wants that with you and if you are still hesitant about it you only got to do one simple thing just go to him with an open heart and just say lord if you are real 
please reveal yourself to me. Show me. Um, you don't have to sit there and pray 10 hours and do this and do that and, and fast for 15 days. Just go to him and say, Lord, if you're real, please, would you please reveal yourself to me and mean it. And I'm telling you right now, he will reveal himself to you either in your heart he'll bring people into your life things will start happening so fast it'll start making you laugh it'll, it'll make you laugh so uh, again my my message for the non-believer is if you're watching this video i think god's trying to get your attention and uh, maybe you should answer that